we can gather together in your name to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, to magnify your name. As about to minister the word of God once again, I pray that you quicken your word and make it real and relevant to all of us. I'm asking you once again to think through my thoughts and speak through my vocal cords and let your word go forth. Let it accomplish that which you've sent to accomplish in every one of our lives and our hearts. I pray, Lord, for a fresh anointed rest upon all of us to hear your word, to see, to receive your word, and to comprehend your word. Let a fresh anointing rest upon us all, Lord. Give us all deeper spiritual understanding. And I thank you, Father, that you're always confirming by your Holy Spirit your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. We give you the glory and the praise, and I commit the minister word of God in your hands. Let your perfect will be accomplished in our midst as it is in heaven. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, Hebrews chapter 12. One of the... Uh, One of the um, mandates that God has been using, Pastor Fair and myself, lately since the pandemic, is to really place an emphasis on all of us being ready and prepared for the Lord's return. And it's very key because to miss the rapture, you miss everything. And some Christians have come so close, and when it takes place, they're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't want any of us missing what the next greatest worldwide global event, universal event that's going to be taking place. We know this is big because God has been speaking about it all the way from the book of Genesis all the way through the revelations. We've taken time and looked at scriptures and you can see many times the scriptures are talking about the coming of the Lord and the rapture and the catching away. And it's implied that God's looking for a bride for his son. And it's all throughout the scriptures. And so tonight's Bible study is to encourage you to ensure that um, you dot your I's, cross your T's, so to speak, wow. and make sure that you, you don't miss out. You know, um, I used to run track and field, very, and competitive sport, and I liked it very much. But they have rules. And you can run a race, and you can even win the race. But if you break the rules, like for example, step out of your lane, you're disqualified. We don't want to see that happen, that somebody unintentionally steps out of the lane, so to speak, and you win the race, but you're disqualified. You don't qualify. We've seen it in Olympics. Um, many times you've seen it in Olympics, especially when they run the relay races. You could see a team wins and and when they go back and review the video, they see that a team member stepped on the line or over the line, or out, of the, out of the lane, I should say, and they're disqualified. Or even we've heard recently where teams can win a gold or a silver. And after when they've tested them, um, somebody tests for a, 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 a banned substance and that disqualifies them. It doesn't matter if they won or not, they're disqualified. So if we see these rules applying in life today, it's also no different spiritually speaking. Even Paul the Apostle speaks that when we run the race, we must run in such a way to, to win it and make sure you win it. So this is what the Bible study is tonight. I'm sure what I'm sharing tonight is not new, but it's a reminder and God is speaking to us. I firmly believe that the Lord is about to return very soon and everybody needs to be ready and prepared. especially when it looks like things are going back to normal. Yeah. But I'm, I'm here to remind you, things are not really going back to normal. We've got an easing, which is great. We're glad we don't have to wear the mask right now. We're glad there's a bit of freedom. But, even, even so, even, but you, you can see what's going on around the world. And don't be surprised by the time, that, if the Lord should tarry, don't be surprised if you find that when the fall comes, there's, people are, are going back into shutdowns. Just, just based on what is going on. So it's not business as usual. It's not the new, it's not um, things are going to be better. It's, things are transitioning mm -hmm. towards the tribulation. That is, the world is transitioning to 
tribulation days. And what the believers, born again Christians, should be doing is preparing to leave or have already prepared to leave and maintaining that, that, uh, that position. So let's look at the Bible search tonight and ensure that um, you don't get disqualified. We'll start off in the book of Hebrews where we'll see there was an individual and in, in, uh, uh, in from the Old Testament that got disqualified. When the time came for him to inherit what was supposed to be his, he got disqualified. And no amount of repentance, no amount of tears could reverse that. It is written in the book of Hebrews for our learning. So I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Glory to God. Everybody there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll have to read the previous verses prior to that. It sets the context, right? And uh, um, But we're just going to dive right into where we want to go tonight. Uh, where I believe the Lord is leading us. And the Word of God says in verse 13, make straight paths your feet. I'm reading King James. Okay? Least that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. In other words, if there's, if there's something weak about you, straighten it out. Amen. If something's not right about you, straighten it out. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Um, follow peace with all men mm -hmm. and holiness. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to ensure that you're doing this. We've been talking lately about uh, three things that can disconnect you from the promises of God. One is not tithing. <clears throat> the other one is uh, uh, strife. Remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The other one is faithlessness, right? So we, were, we, were, we, were, we have already been on this theme already. So if we take heed to those, those messages, we will we'll go and make sure that these things, the things that shouldn't be part of our lives is not part of our lives and the things that we should be embracing that we are embracing, right? But scripture verse 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So make sure these two things are part of your life. You are living peaceably with your fellow man. Amen. But that starts from within. You've got to be at peace within. If, you're not, if you don't have peace within, you cannot have peace on the outside. And wherever you go, there will be the lack of peace because you will be the, you, you'll be the source of stirring up strife. Yeah. Okay? Verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. If you find that you're lacking, ask God for help. Ask God for grace. Ask God to help you. Hmm. Yeah. Don't hesitate to call upon him. The other day I was in a meeting, and some words started to be said. I didn't like what was being said. And there was a reaction within my body that was taking place. I could feel it. Anger started to rise up. And I quickly said, I said, Lord, I don't want to get angry in this meeting. I don't want to lose it because I know if I get angry, I may end up saying something that I don't and I may regret. Help me just keep my peace. And I prayed. It was a silent prayer. Thank God God hears silent prayers. Thank God. Amen. And the person went on talking and I still didn't like what the individual was saying, but the peace came and kept helped me to stay calm. Right? The scripture is saying, looking diligently as any man fail of the grace of God. God's grace is available to strengthen you and to help you in whatever the need is. Amen. Amen. Right? In other words, look for it. Mm -hmm. Depend on it. Yeah. Right? Don't try to tackle these things on your own. Rest on the Holy Spirit. Rely on the Holy Good Spirit. Word, yes. That's why He's there for us. Praise God. The Greek word for Him is called paraclete. He comes alongside us to assist us, to help us. The Bible says He's the Spirit of truth and He will lead us into all truth. He's also called the Comforter. Lean on the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
Again, verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness, make sure you don't allow bitterness to spring up in your heart, mm -hmm. spring it up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got, we'll got. we come back to this word in a moment about being defiled, because you see, you could be going along with your walk with Christ, all right? And you, you, you're doing well, but then you allow bitterness to come in and bitterness can poison your spirit and defile you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch for these things, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's why we see in the book of Proverbs, familiar verse to you, chapter four. Let's just look at it for a moment, just to remind you. That's why we see in Proverbs chapter four, the Bible tells us that to keep your heart with all diligence, because out of it flows the issues of life. And depending on what translation you're reading, the forces of life. In other words, if you don't guard your heart, the good things that you have inside you is gonna seep out or it's gonna to start to flow out. And, and that's why the Bible encourages, keep your peace, yeah. right? Keep it, don't allow it to leave, mm -hmm. right? Keep your joy, don't allow yeah. it to leave, yeah. right? The joy of the Lord is what? Your strength, yeah. right? So in, in, in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, this is what the Word of God says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, Amen. right? Or the forces of life flow out of your heart. Praise the Lord. Right? And um, so watch it and guard it, right? He goes on to say, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee, right? But, okay, so back to Hebrews, right? So many Christians are allowing themselves to be defiled because they're allowing, according to the scripture, the root of bitterness to spring up. Now you have to stop and ask yourself, what causes bitterness? Could be unforgiveness. Right? You got hurt. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you const 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 constantly continue to be hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't give it over to the Lord, it can cause you to turn sour within and you become bitter. Instead of having a sweet spirit in Christ, now you have a bitter spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a bitter spirit, you now have become defiled. Okay. It goes on to say, least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Right? You know the story. He was out hunting. He came back home one day. He was hungry. It looked like he hadn't eaten for a while. He saw, Joseph, uh, he saw his brother Jacob uh, cooking some food. Some say it's soup. I think others have said it's porridge. Whatever it was, he was cooking yeah. some food. Right? Oh. The bottom line, he was cooking some food. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it must have smelled good because you know when you're hungry, food smells good. And when you're hungry, food that wouldn't normally taste good tastes good. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So the guy's famished. Jacob saw it and took advantage of it and said, sell me your birthright. And Esau was quick to sell his birthright. He despised his birthright right then and there. He did not stop to think about what he was giving up. And what he was giving up was not worth a bowl of soup or whatever the meal he got from Jacob. He was following his instincts at that moment. He was, he was being impulsive and the hunger had the better of him and at that moment he gave in to the to the weakness not considering what he was giving up Amen. now you and i need to stop and think about these things what we're hearing tonight in the bible study that you're not exchanging giving up when the time comes for jesus to remove the church that you're not exchanging that for something else wow. yeah. Amen. in other words you're not going to allow other things to get in the way we look back on the story and we see that bowl of soup seemed like a petty thing, a small thing. 
And you know, in light of all these things that are going on in our lives, if you allow the root of bitterness to come in and let it stay there, you know, deal with it. You see, you're, you're making an exchange for leaving when Jesus comes for the church hmm. and clinging on to bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, the whole work that goes with it. And you're clinging to that instead of just letting it go, give it over to Jesus, let him deal with it so you can be free, so you can be so free so that when he comes, you're ready to go. Amen. You see, don't make that kind of exchange. And this is what Esau did. He made that exchange. He sold his birthright. And there's going to be some Christians that are going to, at the closer to coming down to the wire, to the last moment, they're going to make an exchange for something that's not really worth it. Hanging on to the unforgiveness, that you don't want to forgive that individual, it's not worth it. Allowing yourself to get angry and blow, you know, by the says be angry and sin not, it's not worth it, right? So it goes on to say, and it gives an example, least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Yeah. Remember, he went before his father, and he said, I'm the real Esau. Mm -hmm. Don't you have anything left for me? His father said, I really don't have much left for you. I, I blessed your brother. But he did go out and bless him with something, but it wasn't the same. You see? And the scripture says, and he found no place for, of repentance, though, though he sought it carefully with tears. Right? Yeah. There was no change. Right? Right? He could not change what, has ha what, what had happened. Okay? You see, and this is what it's going to be like after the rapture. Many people who did not prepare and knew that Jesus was coming, they will be seeking God with repentance and tears, but they cannot change, undo that they're going to have to go through the tribulation. And how far they get into it and how far they survive, only God knows. But they cannot, in other words, when Jesus comes for the church, and the church is removed. Seconds later, when people, those who are left behind, realize what has happened, I'm talking about those who know some truth and did not prepare themselves, they're going to be weeping and wailing and crying out because they know the truth. They, can't, they cannot get Jesus to come and reopen that door a second time so that they can be caught up. It's not going to happen. The door is closed. Let me read these passages from the Amplified Bible so we can get a better understanding. Mm. Hallelujah. So what I just read for you was just from uh, King James. From the Amplified, it reads like this. And it's, it's more wordy, so bear with me. But listen to it. I'm reading from verse 13. And cut th through and make firm and plain and smooth straight paths for your feet. Yes, make them safe and upright and happy paths that go in the right direction. Make sure you're going that, you're walking that straight and narrow path, saints. Yeah. So that the lame and the halting limbs may not be put out of joint, but rather be cured. Again, as I said before, you're gonna have to read the verses prior to it, right? Yeah. Okay? Because the verses prior to it is talking about strengthening what's weak, mm -hmm. right? Verse 14, strive to live in peace with everybody. Not some folks. Everybody. Because we are called to be the children of God, and the children of God are children of peace. Amen. They're peacemakers. Amen. Right? Strive to live with, in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. Without holiness, nobody's going to see God. And, 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 and you, you add this to it, without the peace of God, you're not going to see God. Those two things, you won't see God. You need to have the peace of God, you need to have the holiness of God, right? Amen. You need to have holiness, right? Amen. Verse 15 says, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. So look out for each other. Mm -hmm. 
to see that no one falls back from to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace. In other words, look out for yourself and look out for your fellow brothers and sisters. If you see your fellow brothers and sisters slipping, you pray for them. Amen. Because Amen. you might find yourself slipping and you need somebody to be praying for you. Amen. Right? His unmerited favor and spiritual blessing in order that no root of resentment, in brackets, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment. So make sure there's no rancor, bitterness, or hatred inside of you, right? Mm -hmm. And the many become contaminated and defiled by it. So this is how some folks are allowing themselves to be defiled. That no one may become guilty of sexual vice, that sexual immoral sins, or become profane, godless, or sacrilegious, that's in brackets. A person as Esau did, who sold his birthright for a single meal. If you want to read it, you can go back to Genesis chapter 25, and read verse 29 to 34. You could read the story there if you, if, if you, if you want to re-familiarize yourself with the story. Verse 17. For you understand that late, for you understand that later on, when he wanted to regain the title to his inheritance of the blessing, he was rejected, in brackets, disqualified and set aside. For he could find no opportunity to repair by repentance. So repentance wasn't going to help him now. It's too late. Yeah. Couldn't undo what he needed to be undone. What he had done, no chance to recall the choice that he had made. Too late. In other words, those who don't make it in a rapture, you cannot change. It's too late. The yeah. choice you made, you're going to have to live with it. Yeah. You cannot reverse it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although he sought it carefully with bitter tears. Let's take a lesson from Esau. He had the right, the birthright to inherit what was coming down through his family line. Amen. But for a meal, he despised it and gave it up to satisfy the flesh. He was spiritually weak. In the process of it, process of it, he didn't realize he disqualified himself. And when the time came for the inheritance to be, to be uh, distributed, to be given out, when he wanted to get it, he couldn't get it. And his, all of the tears that he had could not change or reverse that he had lost it. The, 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 the believers that find themselves left behind because their hearts weren't right or because they allowed themselves to become defiled or for whatever reason will not be able to change the outcome. Jesus will not come back and reopen up that door and says, you know what, I, I, I've been, I saw that you've just been praying for the past 30 minutes and the rapture just took place 30 minutes ago. I haven't really fit, taken all the saints to heaven yet, but I just start to get you and, and come on, I'm bored. I, I'm glad that you repented. That's not gonna happen. Hmm. Wishful thinking, yeah. it's not going to happen. Hmm. That's why the Bible tells us that when the, when the Lord gets up and closes the door, it is, it's going to be closed. Oh, wow. You see, when the ark, the door and the ark was closed, it was closed. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says God himself closed the door Amen. of the ark. And it wasn't open until after the judgment was over, after the waters were abated, or the long time later, when the doors were open, everyone else that was outside of the ark had perished. The doors were not open to rescue those who were outside of the ark. So we have to take this, what we're, what we're hearing very seriously and remind ourselves that the Lord is coming and it's important that I make sure that I'm not breaking any, any I'm not doing anything to disqualify myself. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you see? The word of God tells us uh, in in the book of Philippians chapter 2 uh, verse 12 it's, it tells us it says this Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 it says 
It's a lot of part I'm zooming but I'll read the whole verse. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, but how much more in my absence, here's, here's where we're going, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. It is your responsibility to work it out. Mm -hmm. It's not the pastor's responsibility to work it out for you. It's not your mother's responsibility or your father's responsibility or your wife's responsibility or your husband's responsibility to work it out for you. You gotta work it out for yourself. Amen. Right? And we get a, a clearer <coughs> picture of that when we go to the book of Mark. Let's see what let's see what Jesus has to say along these lines. Because he's got something to say about this. What we're talking about. Okay, so Mark. Mark uh, uh, chapter 7. In this chapter, uh, the religious people uh, uh, surround him and, uh, and they think that being religious is where it's at and that's going to get God's attention. And uh, Jesus didn't mince words about that. He told them, he said, uh, Basically, he said that um, he called them hypocrites. You'll see that in verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied to you of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you, don't allow your heart to stray from God. Amen. Okay? Don't have an outward show or an outward appearance and your heart is far from God. Be sincere. Right? Let your heart be close to God so that whatever the outward show or appearance is genuine and sincere and there's no hypocrisy. Amen. We're seeing a lot of hypocrisy in the body of Christ lately. Mm -hmm. Where people who claim to believe certain things or people who, 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 who you thought was uh, um, of like faith and things like that, it turns out they're not. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're like a Judas. You know, Judas walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Did, he, Judas didn't fool Jesus. Hmm. But the other 11 disciples, they thought that he was with them. Mm -hmm. And they found out at the end that he really wasn't with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had ample opportunity to get it right. Mm -hmm. Even to the, even right up to the last night when he, when, when he was at the Last Supper, yeah. Passover with Jesus. He could have got it right, but he, he chose, he made a decision to betray Christ. Mm -hmm. And his fate is sealed for eternity, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and don't believe anybody and tell, tell you that you're going to see him in heaven. You won't be seen in heaven. If you see him from heaven, you'll be, you'll be watching him from heaven someplace else, mm -hmm. yeah. right? You don't betray Christ and do what you did and end up in heaven. That doesn't work that way, yeah. all right? All right? So, um, Mark chapter 7, and we see here in verse 14, Jesus is speaking here. And uh, just follow me as I read. This is about, so, so I'm, I'm just reading the Word of God. Let the Word of God speak for itself. These passages talk about what defiles a person. We just read in Hebrews about how bitterness can defile a person and cause them to lose out. We also read in Hebrews how because Esau was a fornicator, it defiled him, and, and all of that put together disqualified him. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 14 says, Mark chapter 7, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things so those are they that defile a man. If a man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Verse 18, and he said unto them, Are, you, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Mm -hmm. 
So it says, you know, it goes into his stomach. And then it's purged. He says, that cannot defile a man. If you, if you read in a modern translation, you might find in brackets, it says, it is a comment there that says, um, meaning that all food, you know, you can eat anything if you choose to, if you pray, as long as you pray over it, right? That's my additional comment, right? Because um, I saw that in an NIV version and probably some other versions that it has a, that, 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 that kind of comment. But nevertheless, the focus isn't so much on that. Um, verse 19. Because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly. Okay, verse 20. And he, and he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, mm. covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, mm. blasphemy, pride, mm. foolishness. Wow. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Yes. So you know what? If you have not bound and you 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 fix it, you got it made up your mind. I'm going to I'm going to do whatever. Make sure that I don't step on that line to disqualify myself. I'm not going to be walking that broad road that leads to destruction. I'm going to stay that on a straight and narrow path. You will want to make sure that. All 13 of these things that Jesus talks about, the 13 of them, if you count them up, and, and, and know this, the number of rebelling is 13. Mm -hmm. Okay? Wow. From a biblical perspective, the number of, of, of the number for rebellion is 13, mm -hmm. right? Okay? And, and you'll find that there is 13 th things that Jesus calls out that has the potential to defile a person, yes, sir. right? Mm -hmm. So again, we saw in Hebrews, it talks about defile. We see Jesus talking about this word defile. The word defile means to make profane, mm -hmm. um, to call common, to defile, to pollute, to unclean. It also means to make unclean or impure. So if a person allows bitterness to remain in their heart, it is now making you impure. All right? It's Amen. polluting you. It's corrupting you. Amen. Okay? So it, it means to make unclean or impure. Uh, it also means to make dirty. Right? It means to corrupt. All right? So even, if, if, even from a spiritual point of view, so, um, you may well ask the question, what does it mean to... What, what is the spiritual meaning to defile? To defile something is to undermine its original state of purity, to contaminate it, to make it unclean. Mm -hmm. Bitterness will do that. Anger has the potential to do that if it goes unchecked. All the things that we just read about, those 13 things that we just read what Jesus said, all 13 of them if they're allowed to remain in the heart of man, they will defile you. Not maybe, they will, if it's allowed to stay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay, so, um, right, so, no, number one is evil thoughts. Everything starts with a thought, does it not? Yes. Yes? yes. 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 Uh-huh. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7 says, As a man thinketh, so he is. So you've got to start to take inventory of your thought life. When you start to pay attention to your thought life, if it is not lining up with the word of God, and if what you're thinking, you'd be embarrassed if somebody else knew what you were thinking, then you need to, with God's help, to start to change what you're thinking. Right? God has made us in such a way that we don't, most of us do not know each other's thoughts. But the more spiritual you become, you can perceive what people are thinking. And, and, and as the spirit of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are working, you can be quite accurate. Right? But, but, the, but the point is, is, this, is that if you have thought a thought or thinking certain things and you know that you would be embarrassed or ashamed if others knew what you were thinking, 
then you know it's telling you that's not appropriate. If you would be ashamed to speak it out openly and you know that it's not appropriate to speak it out openly, then you might want to consider to yourself, is it appropriate to be thinking it? In other words, we need to start to go to that level, right? Because some, some have been comfortable with allowing themselves to be entertained all kinds of thoughts that are not right. True. Because they say, well, it's just me, it's private, I'm okay, and all that. Not from God's point of view, it's not okay. Yeah. Man. Right? So the scripture says that the, the, these, where, we, where Jesus is saying that it starts with our thought life. Mm -hmm. That is, I'm talking about being defiled. Mm -hmm. Okay? Evil thoughts can defile an individual. Yeah. Adulteries. Well, we know what that is. It's if, if a person is married and he or she is sexually involved with somebody else that they're not married to, that's adultery. Mm -hmm. They're being unfaithful. They're breaking the marriage covenant. Mm -hmm. That can defile a person. Mm -hmm. Fornicators. People who are not married to each other and having sexual relationships with somebody else. Um, they are also defiling themselves. Mm -hmm. If a man lies with a virgin and, and, and uh, takes away her virginity, he's defiled her. Mm -hmm. If he is not married to her, mm -hmm. she's defiled. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Um, murders can defile a person. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be going down that road. Amen. And, and even go a little further. Jesus said, if any man hates his brother, he, you know, to the point that he hates the person, it's like he's murdered him. So we don't want to be going down that road. So don't allow yourself to go down the road and allow yourself to hate an individual or individuals. Because that's going to produce hatred. And from hatred, it all depends on how far it goes. Bitterness, guess what? You, you're defiling yourself. Right? Thefts. You don't want to be stealing. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to be stealing. If I go back to covetousness, it's, it's really the bottom line is greed, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. All right. And, um, you know, you, you've got, uh, when it talks about wickedness, that's malice. Right? You've got deceit. Uh, when it talks about lasciviousness in the King James, that's lewdness mm -hmm. in modern English. Mm -hmm. All right? When it talks about in King James, an evil eye in modern English, that would be envy. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Yeah. When it talks about um, uh, blasphemy, uh, that's like slander. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you gotta be careful that you're not blaspheming the Holy Spirit too. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Um, when it talks about uh, in King James pride, that's arrogance. Mm -hmm. There's many Christians that are arrogant. Okay? Right? Pride. Full of pride, full of arrogance. Saints. Don't allow that. If, if, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you with that, don't allow that to be part of your life. Amen. Okay, because arrogance, pride can defile you. You may think, well, it won't defile you. It can't. Because, you know, some, some Christians are puffed up and says, look at me, you know, I'm, I'm living this life. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I, um, I don't do this. I don't do that. Like the Pharisees, you know, like, you know, you remember some of the Pharisees says, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't behave like that publican, the tax collector, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, he, he was in the temple praying and he says, and he's thanking God that he's not like the publican, right? And then the one who, who, who is a publican, he barely lifts his, his eyes to heaven, but he says, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. He recognizes he's a sinner. Yeah. The, the question is asked, who, who, who left being justified? The one who, it was, it was the publican, yeah. right? Yeah. So don't, 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 don't allow that sort of thing to be a part of your life, pride, okay? And, and King James says foolishness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, modern would be folly. Don't, these things, don't allow it to be part of your life. So, 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 so Jesus is talking about 13 things that can defile a person. And it's interesting how the number of 13 speaks of rebellion. So there's 13, 13 things in a man's heart hmm. that if it's allowed to stay, God wants 
wants to purge it out of us. Amen. So if you recognize any of these 13 things in your heart, or, or if, if any of these things have seeped in, you need to say, I don't, I'm not going to have anything to do with this. I repent, Lord, I want this out of me because I don't want to be disqualified. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be defiled. Do you see? So, so, so take time to understand and recognize these things. Again, if I go back to track and field, we are reminded of the rules before we, we run the race. At least a good coach will remind you, says, remember, stay within the line. Don't be doing this or don't be doing that because I want you to win, but I don't want you to be disqualified. Like, you know, run a good race, right? And so it is the spiritual walk, the spiritual journey. God wants us to run a good race so that when we get to the end of it, we qualify and we haven't disqualified ourselves in the process of it because we allowed any, any one of these things that Jesus talked about to be in our lives and we didn't repent about it and we just allowed, we were comfortable with it. Amen. You, 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 you see? Yeah. yeah. You see? Um, you, you know, there's, there's some men who have prided themselves to the point where they think, well, they're good. Um, and even even Jesus says, "Call no man good." You know, and if you know anything about man, men can be good as long as the circumstances are ideal. But the circumstances should change for 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 uh, a difficult or rough. You soon see the true colors of man come out. I remember when we had the ice storm um, many years ago, and those of you who were in the Kingston area at the time, and you know, the place looked like a war zone. But what is interesting about it, which kind of surprised me, normally, normally Canadians on a whole are, are well-mannered people and they govern themselves well. But to my surprise, I mean, during the ice storm, you, you find them stealing generators from the fire station. You know, and if anybody needs the generators, it's the fire station, right? But they're stealing generators. It says, okay, now the true colors are coming out. You're more, you're more that's a selfish thing. Everybody has it out of power, but you've got to go steal it from, the, from, 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 from someone else who's going to need it more than you. So we, we, we have to watch ourselves along those lines, you know, because, I mean, again, if the, if the circumstances change, you'll find yourself doing things that you never thought you would do. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean if, if you're out on the street and you, tomorrow you get out on the street and you, you get kicked out and all that and things has turned really sour for you. Um, some people will say, I'll never sell drugs, we'll sell drugs. Right? Just to survive. Right? Some, 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 some people who say, well, I'll never sell myself, will go sell themselves so they, just to survive. So we, 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 we can't pride ourselves with that we're so good. Because everybody, most people behaves themselves if the, if the circumstances are ideal. But if they're not ideal, you'll soon see the true colors come out of, 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 of you know, when it comes to human nature. Now, the solution to this, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 has 13 verses. How about that? How convenient, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is all about? It's all about the way of it's all about the God kind of love, right? Not about how man loves, but how God wants us to love. And you see, so if, if, if any of these 13 things that Jesus talks about is in your life, the way you're going to get the victory is through the love of God, yes. right? Yeah. Let me read this. I know you know it, but it, it says... Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, I have not and have not charity. That's another word for love, mm -hmm. right? I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. In other words, you and I are nothing without the love of God or the God kind of love. Praise You've got to have it. Yeah. Right? We're nothing. Right? Verse 3. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, have not love, it profits me nothing. Right? Charity suffereth long. There's love. And is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Mm -hmm. 
does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, it is, e it is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, beareth all things. Remember the scripture tells us, um, you may be familiar with this, that perfect love covers a multitude of faults or covers a multitude of sins. We, we can look at that scripture verse late, later on, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's the love of God that, uh, that enables you, empowers you to forgive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? You can't do it without the love of God. Mm -hmm. Right? So, 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 verse 8, Charity never faileth, but whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, mm -hmm. then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yeah. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now by this faith, Hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. So saints, it's through the love of God, the God kind of love, that you get the victory over rebellion. Amen. Okay? And if you go over this and, and you'll see, if, 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 if you have the God kind of love, it's not going to envy. So the, there'll be no uh, um, uh, desiring something that doesn't belong to somebody. There's no room for jealousy there. It says it doesn't vaunt it itself. It doesn't puff itself up. There's no room for arrogance. Mm -hmm. Can you see how this is the answer to the very things that Jesus talked about? Yes. Yeah. Right? It, it rejoices not in iniquity. In other words, you're not going to be comfortable in, with sin or even thinking about it. All right? Mm -hmm. or, or allowing yourself to be entertained by it. Right? Mm -hmm. He said it beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. You see, it's telling us how, we, how this love, this God kind of love is going to help us and assist us to, to be thinking the way we ought to be thinking. Right? Yeah. Okay? It suffereth long. It's kind. It envieth not. Glory to God. Patience. Well, patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit, is it not? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So, um, the modern translation would put it like this. Love is patient. Amen. Love is kind. Yes. It doesn't envy. Amen. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. Ah, maybe pause there for a moment. Ask yourself, am I dishonoring another person or others? If you are, that's not the God kind of love. Do you see? In other words, if we, if we follow this, it's gonna, ch it's, it's gonna change our behavior if, wherever it needs to be changed. I will not fall into the trap of, 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 uh, of being guilty of any of these 14, 13 items that Jesus talks about that has the potential to pollute, to, to defile us. You see? Yeah. It, it's not self-seeking. It's, it's not easily angered. You know, you're not quick to fly off the handle. Okay? It keeps no record of wrongs. So if somebody may wrong you today, you, you, you move on. Yes. You make a decision, I choose to forgive you. I mean, you, you, you know, you make it up in yourself. I said, you know, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm going to move on. I'm, something bigger is happening or going to happen and I'm not going to allow you to distract me. Amen. Or for me to get focused about what you have just done, I'm moving on. I'm not going to allow that to eat me out or bother me or trouble me. Are you, are you, are you all seeing this? Yes. Amen. Okay. It, it doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It, 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 love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. Right? Here, here's another thing. It protects. Yes. It, it always trusts. Yeah, okay? Right? Always hopes. Always perseveres. Right? And, and, it, and it ends in verse 8. Love never fails. Where other things may, may come to an end, the love of God, the God kind of love, is not going to fail. I'm talking about the God kind of love. Amen. Right? You have the God kind of faith. You'll find that in Mark chapter 11. But we're talking about the God kind of love. And the God kind of love doesn't have any limitations. It doesn't place any limitations. You see, man's love is like this. 
I'll love you if you love me, and I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back. That's man's love. It's limited. But God's love is unlimited. Very and that's so. the kind of love that God has is, is called you and I to operate in. Mm -hmm. Okay? To operate in that kind of love towards your fellow man. And if we operate in that kind of love, we will not fall into the trap of, a, of, of any of those 13 things or other things that can defile us to get in our system and defile us. And if it does come in, if we're walking that God kind of love, we'll get it out real fast. Praise God. Right? It, it, like, it's, like it's in and out. It's not here to stay. It's not, you're not going to stick around to, to, to defile me. Right? Because the, 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 the scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love. I'm talking about the God kind of love. Mm -hmm. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. Mm -hmm. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Amen. Oh, glory to God. You, 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 you see? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You see, so when we put all this together, We'll see now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you want to just go there with me for a moment, makes sense, because Paul the Apostle writes, and what he's writing is not any much different from what Jesus had to say in Mark chapter 7, and it's not that much different what we read by the writer of the book of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 12, right? And, and this is what he, if, if you want to go there with me, just, just, just go there with me for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, right? In this chapter, he talks about how our bodies are supposed to be holy, our bodies is not meant for fornication, for defilement, and all that kind of stuff, right? Right? And so, he says in verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? In other words, if anybody is practicing anything that's unrighteous, you cannot, it's impossible to inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. And, and, and to be clear, he goes on and starts being specific. He says, be not deceived. In other words, don't kid yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't lie to yourself. Because some people will lie to themselves as well. God understands. God knows. And I'll, I'll, you know, when, I'll, I'll be in right standing with God. You're not, you're not going to inherit anything. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. If any of these things are part of your life. Yes, sir. Listen, listen to what it says. He says, again, be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Is, is, did, we, did we read that in uh, Mark chapter 7? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we read that in, in, Mark, in, in Hebrews chapter 12. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so pe pe people who practice this sexual moral lifestyle and they profess to be Christians, when Jesus comes from the church, if they're still in that state, unrepentant and still living that way they are going to be left behind because they'll disqualify themselves they will not qualify to 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 be to inherit the kingdom of god you see so we're talking about things that can cause an individual to be disqualified remember what it says in luke chapter 21 verse 36 he says jesus himself said watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth so that you may be so that you can stand before the son of man yes. right in, in, other, in other words you got to what jesus is saying that you got to qualify right so it goes on to say no idolaters so if you're off worshiping other idols or other gods and stuff like that you got if other things come before jesus mm -hmm. you, you can disqualify yourself no adulterers there it is again no effeminate all right, so you know, I mean, some people don't like to hear this, but if, if you're a woman and you're going with a woman, if you're a man going with a man, according to the word of God, you can profess to be born again Christian, you could even be reading your Bible and doing all these wonderful things according to the word of God. Anybody who's practicing this lifestyle, and you can read Romans chapter 1, will not inherit the kingdom of God, so don't allow yourself to be deceived, nor abuses of themselves as mankind. So, I mean, that. Abuse of themselves, that, that's a broad category. That could be somebody who's into drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Alcohol, yeah. substance abuse. It's not limited to that, but you can see it's a broad picture. Mm -hmm. Wherever wherever man abuses themselves from God's perspective, the scripture is saying, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. In verse 10, no thieves. There it is again. Mm -hmm. No covetous. There it is again. No drunkards. Just in case you're thinking it's okay to be taking out occasional wine. 
You don't have to be to become intoxicated to become a drunkard. It's not for the believer. Alcohol is not for the believer. And, and, and now that uh, marijuana has been um, legalized, it's not for the believer unless you're on medication. And, you know, your doctor's prescribed it and you're, you're there for, for medical reasons, but don't be smoking that stuff for pleasure just because it's legal. But, you, you know, it's the same thing, you, you shouldn't be taking that occasional drink just because it, it's some, it, it, you know, for, 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 for pleasure. One thing leads to the next, right? So it's, it's saying here, no drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This is what he's writing to the, to the church of Corinth. Yeah. Do you see that sense? Okay, so let's go, let's go a little further. He, and I'm wrapping up with this. Paul writes similar words to the church of, of, of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Right? Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. Hallelujah. We need to understand what the rules are. We need to understand what can disqualify us. Mm -hmm. And make sure whatever can disqualify us, we are going to avoid it. In other words, intentionally and deliberately. In other words, nobody gets into heaven by chance. Mm -hmm. is, does that make sense? Yeah. Nobody's going to be caught up in the rapture by chance. Mm -hmm. Right? Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. And you'll find there's 19 of them. Right? Which are these? Adultery. We've seen that, right? Mm -hmm. Fornication. We've seen that. Uncleanness. Well, that's to do with defilement, is it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Oh, that's a new one. Hatred. Mm -hmm. Now, now this, this, this is much, much plainer. Variance. Well, for someone who likes strife, you know? Mm -hmm. Emulations, wrath. Very plain, here it is. Strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. And such a like, in other words, the list is not limited to this, and it said, and such a like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, here it is, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And he goes on to say, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. There it is again. You see, saints. Back to what we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the love of God, the God kind of love, not man's love, is going to get you the victory over all forms of rebellion. Right? And so, so, it's, so, 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 so the first one, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the key. Right? Because we're nothing without the love of God. Amen. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And there it is, saints. We've got to take these scriptures seriously. Yeah. We, 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 you, we've got to take them seriously. That ensuring that we don't end up like Esau. Esau disqualified himself. And when he disqualified himself, he didn't even realize he disqualified himself. He did not, con he did not even realize what he did. When he realized the gravity of the whole thing, when it was too late. Too late. Well, he says, God doesn't want us to wait until the gravity, sorry, he doesn't want us to wait until it's over. God, Jesus removed the church and you're left behind for you to understand the seriousness of these words. Amen. Let's understand it now. And let's make sure that none of these things that we know that can disqualify us is not going to be part of us. Amen. And we're going to walk in the Spirit, walk in love towards each other, allow God's love to, to uh, take over, Amen. right? Amen. To, 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 uh, to have its way in our lives. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, faith worketh by love. And the Bible tells us the just must live by Faith. You might want to go over these scriptures that I've just read so that it sinks deep into your spirit 
and you understand what what God's word says that can disqualify a person from inheriting the kingdom of God. Amen. And we don't want to see anybody getting disqualified because that's terrible. To win a race or to place on the podium for a second or third only to find out later on you're disqualified because you you or your teammate did something that they didn't have to do. Yes? yes. yes. Let's take heed to what God is saying. Amen. We're in summer watch. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you serious with this? You need to be if you're not. Don't take it lightly. Because when it's over, saints, when the rapture is over, there's going to be a lot of folks weeping and wailing because they, will, they know what, they would have known what happened and they knew the truth, but they weren't prepared. Make sure you're not one of those. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why God has been placing a strong emphasis on us getting ourselves prepared and ready to go. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I trust that you've received. Yeah. Let's stand. We're going to close in prayer. If anybody has any questions of what they've heard tonight, you can you can send us an email and let us know. And um, we'll address it at a later time. Glory to God. But I do trust that you all heard and you receive and you understand what God is saying. All right? Certain behavior can cause a person to be disqualified from inheriting the kingdom of God. Amen. And we don't want to be in, we don't want to be doing those things out of ignorance and said, so, "Oh, if I had known, I would have I wouldn't have broken that rule," you know. No, no, no. We now know. Let's pray for each other. Let's help each other. Let's allow the love of God to have his way in our hearts that we are truly walking in love towards each other. I'm talking about the God kind of love, not man's love. Amen. The God kind of love that knows no limits. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. We want to say thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for quickening your word and make it real to us tonight. Mm -hmm. I pray Lord, you help us all to take, to, to seriously consider what we've heard and I'm asking you to cause the truth of your to sink deep into our hearts that we will leave this place and will truly become doers of your word. Mm -hmm. And if any of these things that the word of God talks about that is in our lives that has the potential to, 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 to corrupt us or pollute us or defile us, I pray, Lord, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you help us to identify it and to repent and to walk away with it and turn it over to the Lord and let him have his way in our lives so that we will not allow these things to disqualify us or to keep us down or to miss the next greatest event that's going to be happening soon. Lord, I pray you keep us all in the way that we should go, that every one of us that's hearing this word, that when that time comes and you come for the church, every one of us will be ready and prepared and qualified to be caught up to meet Jesus in the air yes, Lord. with great joy and great peace and great love. And it will be a glorious day, Father. I pray, Lord, you strengthen every one of us. And if any one of us have weak limbs or weak, any weakness about us, I pray by your grace that you'll strengthen us and you, you'd help us all to work on our salvation with fear and trembling you, the way we ought to, to consecrate ourselves, to sanctify ourselves, to live according to your holy word, Amen. to live that clean, holy, godly life that you've called us to live. Yes. Lord. In Jesus' name, give us all a deeper spiritual understanding concerning this. Yes. And to take this seriously, what you're speaking to us and what your word says. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.